Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to keep working on that basic web page I just made a second ago. So here's my basic page. It really just has a headline, a paragraph, and an image on it. Uh, now for the HTML, I wrote that using HTML5, and I've got a div tag, which is uniquely identified as container. Then I have a header section, which contains my heading one element. Then I have a div ID content which contains a paragraph and an image. Okay, So what I have right now is a plain basic HTML file. So I want to go ahead and create some styles. Now here's my HTML file and I want to create a style sheet. Okay, So I'm going to head over to the head section of my page and I'm going to create a link tag. And my link tag has a couple of attributes. So the link tag it's going to have, um, well let's see, let's do the relationship it's going to be a style sheet. The type of style sheet, it's a text-based CSS file. Oops, didn't mean to close that. And let me go just go and do an href in here. The hyper reference is going to be um, mystyle1.css. I haven't created that yet though. Okay, So my page is mypage1.html. Now I'm creating a style sheet and I'm using a link tag. So I want to link this style sheet over to my web page. So I need a new file. Here it is. I'm going to go ahead and do a file save as. I'm going to save it to my desktop. I'm going to call it mystyle1.css. So my style sheet has a CSS extension. My web page has an HTML extension. Now, it's got a different syntax with style sheets, but basically, if I want to format something, uh, let's do this here. Let's say I want to format my container. Now, my container is pretty much everything on my page, okay? So it's div ID container. If I want to refer to an element that has a specific ID, this is the way I do it on my style sheet. I jump over here and I put in a pound sign. I didn't need to press that enter key. I'm not sure exactly why I did it, but I did. And I'm going to go ahead and call this container. Okay. So if you're using an ID, then this is an ID selector, pound sign container. And I use a curly braces to open it up here. And let me just change something really obvious. I'm going to put a border on here. That border will be five pixels solid and um, black. Okay, and I'm going to do a closing curly braces. So this is called a CSS rule. I have a selector which indicates the thing that I want to mess with. And then within that, you know, in the properties or the declarations for this particular rule, I want to change the border of my container. How do I want to change my border? I want to make it five pixels thick a solid border and a black border. Okay, so border is a shorthand property. It lets me do several things to the border all at once. So I'm going to save this, and if I go back to my web page and hit refresh, you can now see that black border. Okay, so let's start to think about this one by one. Well, I've got the black border, and let's say you're happy with that, but I don't like how close the image is. You see how it's buttoned right up next to it, and the text is butting up right next to it, and my heading is right there. I want some more cushion around the inside of the border. Well, that cushion is called padding. So in addition to making this border, I'm going to put in some padding on all four sides of about 10 pixels. So my container will have a 5 pixel thick solid black border and it's going to have some padding inside of that border. I save, go back to my browser and refresh and now I've got padding around there. That's the basic process for using an ID selector in CSS. Let's try something else here. Okay, so I've modified my container. Now let's look at something else I can modify. Now, <clears throat> Now if I want to modify a particular element, in this case let's say I want to modify my paragraph. And my paragraph is indicated by the paragraph tag. So what I'm going to do here is I want to use a tag selector or a type selector. I'll call it a tag selector. I want to modify my paragraph. On my style sheet, instead of using a pound sign, I just type in a letter P. And this will let me format just that paragraph. And I will do uh, background color and I'll do a hex code for blue and I'll do a foreground color for a hex code of yellow. Okay, So my paragraph is going to have a blue background and yellow text. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, go back to my browser, there it is, and refresh and there it is. My paragraph has a blue background and yellow text. And there's a lot of elements you can manipulate in this particular way, but not all of them. 
This may change in the future though. So some of the tags I used are very, very new. So if you know, already knew some HTML, then most of them are pretty familiar to you. Header though is one of the new HTML5 elements, so I can't just really format that with my CSS. But it does allow me to refer to headings in two different places. Check this out for a second. Let's say that I had another heading down here. Another heading one, for instance, headline for my page, and let's see, um, I'll just call it another headline. Okay, so I have two heading ones. I have a heading one that's inside of my header, and then I have a heading one that's not inside of my header. Two different headings. So on, let me go save that. On my style sheet, I can refer to this in a number of different ways using some different kinds of selectors. And let me just scroll this up here. Okay, so I've got a heading one that's within my header. This is called a um, descendant selector. Okay, and let's see, for this heading one, I will do um, red text, and let me go ahead and center it too. Okay, and then I've got heading ones that are not in the header. So I can just say heading one. I really should have these in an opposite order. Um, but let's say, yeah, so I'm going to actually take this one. This will make more sense in a, probably in a later video. And let's say my heading one, my regular heading ones will be color, pound sign, green. And that's it. I'll just do that. So let's kind of see how this is looking. And my color coding here is a little bit weird, but that's okay. So my heading ones will be green. My heading ones that are in my header, though, those are going to be red and centered. Let's see what happens. There we go. My basic heading is green. My heading that's in my header section is red. But with CSS, you can start to change the look colors, layout, and even some of the function of your web page.